www.cdc.gov or call 1-800-CDC-INFO. We believe this new virus spreads mostly from person to person through respiratory droplets produced when someone who is sick coughs or sneezes. This is similar to how flu and other respiratory illnesses spread. These droplets can land in the mouth or nose of people nearby, or possibly be inhaled into the lungs. Most person-to-person -person spread happens when people are in close contact. It's also possible that this virus can spread when someone touches a contaminated surface and then touches the mouth, nose, or eyes. Hi, I'm Dr. Nancy Massonnier from CDC. I'd like to give you the latest update on the novel coronavirus spreading in the U.S., known as COVID-19. As of Sunday evening, March 8th, 34 states plus New York City and D.C. reported more than 500 cases. While right now our most affected states are California and Washington, the number of affected states, cases, and deaths will continue to rise. That's why I'd like to talk to you about risk. Risk can be looked at in two ways. There's risk of being exposed and getting sick from this virus, and there's risk of getting very sick or dying from illness with this virus. This virus is capable of spreading easily and sustainably from person to person. And there's essentially no immunity against this virus in the population because it's new. Based on this, it's fair to say that as the trajectory of the outbreak continues, many people in the United States will at some point in time, either this year or next, be exposed to this virus, and there's a good chance they will become sick. But again, we do not expect most people to develop serious illness. This seems to be a disease that affects adults, and most seriously, older adults. Starting at 60, there is an increased risk of death and the risk increases with age. The highest risk of serious illness and death is in people older than 80. People with serious underlying health conditions also are more likely to develop serious outcomes, including death. I'd like to go through our recommendations for people at highest risk. Make sure you have supplies on hand, like routine medications for blood pressure and diabetes. Have enough household items and groceries so that you will be prepared to stay at home for a period. Avoid crowds, especially in poorly ventilated spaces. Travelers, particularly those with underlying health issues, should defer all cruise ship travel worldwide. We also recommend that people at higher risk avoid non-essential long plane trips. Last and most important, know what's going on in your community. I understand these recommendations may not be popular and that they may be difficult for some people. At CDC, our number one priority is the health and safety of the American people. These are the kind of recommendations I've made to my parents. Everyone has a role to play in helping to protect our family members, friends, colleagues, and neighbors who are most at risk. Check CDC's website for the latest information, cdc.gov slash COVID-19, and know what's going on in your community. Let's work together to protect each other. Hi, I'm Dr. Jay Butler, Deputy Director for Infectious Diseases at CDC. I'd like to talk to you about the new virus that causes the disease COVID-19. Older adults and people who have severe chronic medical conditions like heart, lung, or kidney disease, or diabetes may be at higher risk for severe illness from COVID-19. If you are one of the people at increased risk for serious COVID-19 illness, 
it's especially important for you to take action to reduce the risk of getting COVID-19 now. The first thing you can do is take care of your own health. Wash your hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds. Use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol if soap and water are not available. Cover your coughs or sneezes with a tissue, or cough or sneeze into your elbow, not your hands. Avoid contact with people who are sick. Clean and disinfect surfaces in your home, such as counters, tabletops, and doorknobs to remove germs. Use household cleaning sprays or wipes according to the label instructions. The next thing you can do is make a plan for what to do if you do get sick. Know who will take care of you if your caregiver gets sick. Talk to your healthcare provider about getting extra necessary medications to have on hand. Get enough supplies too, including enough household items and groceries so you can stay home for a few weeks if you have to. The third thing you can do is pay attention to what's happening locally. If COVID-19 is spreading in your community, stay home as much as possible and avoid crowds. If you get sick with fever, cough, or shortness of breath, call your healthcare provider. If you develop warning signs, such as difficulty breathing, persistent pain or pressure in your chest, confusion, or blueness of the lips or face, these may be signs of serious illness. Call 911. For more information and the latest resources, please visit cdc.gov COVID-19 or call 1-800-CDC-INFO. That's 1-800-232-4636.